During this video, I'm going to be sharing my pet portrait secrets. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Marion Dutton. I'm a professional artist. I'm the author of the Healing Art book, but most importantly, I am a teacher and the founder of Maz Art Studio. So if you are enjoying my tutorials, please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already and give me those all important thumbs up because I'll be bringing you more information right from the studio. So feel free to add your comments below as well if there's something in particular you guys would like to see me paint just for you. This is the grey arm that we'll be working on for this demonstration. I've actually transferred this already with pencil to the canvas sheet and I've sprayed that with a cheap hairspray and that's very important to fix that pencil outline. The products we're using is Zest It Lean Medium which is a fast dry medium and I'm using um, the Georgian Burnt Umber Oil Paints but I will put a link below to all the products that I'm using including the canvas sheet that I'm actually painting on as well. Now you'll see I'm adding a little puddle of the oil medium and the burnt tumber and I'm using a scrubby brush and I'm going to cover the entire paper with this. This is why it's so important to fix that pencil outline. Now you'll see I've sped this up for you. At this point I'm taking a paper towel and I'm going to uh, remove the excess oil um, and the excess paint from this and get a really nice even surface. So now I'm taking a look at the reference and making a decision which is lighter the animal or the background and in this particular case the background is a little bit lighter so I'm using a paper towel now and I'm beginning to remove some of that background and this is the whole technique we will be adding and taking away using different tools such as um, q-tips uh, paper towels to remove the oil paint and of course we'll be adding the oil as well here you'll see me using a mop to remove any excess paper towel so now I'm using a um, cotton bud q-tip to remove some of the lights that I can see in the eye and the more I rub the lighter the area will go and I'll start working over the whole of the portrait really looking for the big shapes at this stage and again if you can see the reference at the side that I'm carefully making note where I can see those lights and dark areas and I've switched now to a paper towel while I work in a bigger area and start to remove some of the, the larger shapes that I can see. You really need to be thinking of just shapes. You'll see at this stage, I'm not trying to paint hair at all, I'm just looking for lighter shapes that I can see on the dog. So now I'm using a small flat brush and I'm beginning to work in the eyes. Typically I always start on the eyes with all portraits. And I'll use a, a brush relevant to the area that I'm working. So if I'm in a small area, I use a smaller brush. And again, you'll see I'm jumping between adding the darker colours on there and taking off some of those lighter tones with a Q-tip. I tend to use flat brushes mostly, but we'll switch to smaller rounds when I'm doing some detailed work in the eyes. 
here you'll see I've gone to a, um, a more of a medium flat now as I begin to sort of look for some of the real dark shapes in this portrait. Here you'll see me switch into a mop. Now this is something I do all the time. I I always use a mop to soften any of the areas that I'm working in. So now I'm back on the eyes. And again, a little bit stronger with the burnt umber now as I start to reinforce the pupils. I'm really paying attention to those details around the eyes. As I do one eye, I always jump over and complete the second eye as well. I am constantly looking at the reference photo so I can make sure that the shapes that I'm painting match the shapes on the photograph. So this paint is going on that little bit thicker And again, you can see that I'm constantly jumping between adding on the darks and taking off the lights. Now here I'm using the brush as a tool. So I've actually cleaned the brush, dipped it in a little bit of the oil and I'm using the brush as an eraser, which is a great little tool to use as well. So if you wanted those finer lines, then you use a brush to do that as well. So here you can see I'm using a clean brush that's been dipped in a little bit of that oil and I'm using that now to pull out a few hair shapes and again back to the q-tip as well. Now very important you do not want the oil to be dripping wet so I dip into the oil and then I always wipe that excess off. So here you can see that I'm creating some of those lighter shapes now and the light patterns So back to reinforcing the eyes, a little bit stronger paint and again really focusing on those details. So you're constantly going back and forth and reinforcing what you've already done. Thank you. 
working on the nose now and again not really seeing it as a nose just seeing it as light and dark shapes We've got the nice dark nostrils in there. always using that mop to soften everything now again I'm using that um, technique of dipping a clean brush into a bit of oil and using the oil as an eraser just to get some of that light that I can see right under the nostril back to using the q-tip now and again you can see that all the strokes whether I'm using a brush or a q-tip or a paper towel are always in the direction that the hair is growing Creating an underpainting serves as a map for your colour layers, you establishing the tone of the entire portrait. And by creating this map, this underpainting, it really does simplify the whole painting process. I absolutely love this technique. So here you can see I'm working on the collar, starting to remove a little bit of the light that I can see on there and some of the metal work on the collar. Again sometimes it's easier to put the dark in first and then use an eraser to lift out your lights. back to the bigger brush and a slightly darker tone again reinforcing some of the darker shapes that I can see on there I'm really starting to look for those final contrasts now of the light and dark in the portrait I really do think it's worth taking your time um, to do a really good detailed underpainting as I really do believe it is the key to a beautiful finished painting so I always stand back and check the final portrait and make sure that I'm happy and of course use that mop to do any final softenings. So this is the finished underpainting. Uh, don't forget to check back next week when I'll do the uh, first colour layers and keep watching the video because I'll share some of my recent commission works and some works of my students. Remember to check part two of the blocking in stages of this portrait.